Hi, everyone, and welcome to Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review. I'm Stephanie, and I've been collecting and selling vintage fashion magazines for over 20 years. And I'm Morley. I'm a former copywriter and am now an award-winning playwright and screenwriter. Together, we will examine some of your favorite vintage fashion magazines from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. On Uncovered, we'll discuss some of the magazine's models, layouts, and did I mention the models? And we'll also review some of the ads and articles that make these magazines such a great piece of pop culture history. So, fashion your seatbelts and let's get uncovered! Hey everyone, Stefan Morley here. Welcome to the Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review Podcast. And today, the episode we'll be focusing on is Harper's Bazaar, November of 1981. So Morley, what do you remember about 1981? Well, I remember mostly about the music and the movies. So for example, for the music, we had Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Oh, great song. Great video. And we all loved Olivia Newton-John. Still do. Still do. Uh, Waiting for a Girl Like You. Yes. Another great song. And for movies, uh, there was On Golden Pond, which I never saw, but I remember the Academy Awards when Henry Fonda, I believe, won an Academy Award. Oh, great movie. With Jane Fonda's daughter. Fantastic. Also, of course, there was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes, I remember that well. I saw that in Florida. We were vacationing in Florida. And my personal favorite was Superman 2. And I liked that movie so much that my friend Ted and I snuck in for the uh, later matinee performance. So for me, it was one of my all-time favorite sequels. Very cool. So that's what I remember. How about you? Do you remember anything about uh, 1981? So just now you mentioned, so I know where I was around this time, 1981. I was vacationing in Florida with my family. I was 11 years old. Did they take you out of school? No, this was on our, this was on school break. Okay, that's a weird time for a break in November. No, no, I think it was probably when the movie actually came out, it was probably December. Oh, I see. Okay, that makes sense. Got it. Yeah. So that's what I remember from that time. Okay, great. Super. So moving right along, we're going to start with the cover. Harper's Bazaar, I'm going to read you the headlines just to give you an idea of what was going on in fashion. So he's easy sex appeal. Special guide to your new sensational makeup, hair, and clothes. The beautiful people diet. You can never be too rich or too thin. Very famous quote. Rich and racy. 90 knockout fashion looks. You'll want them all. I'm sure that we will. Absolutely. (laughs) Extra. Petite bazaar. Fabulous furs. Big evening options. And sex appeal report. What men really go for. Okay. Which is always top of mind for women. Well, just ask me. Yes. So, Brooke Shields on the cover. Photo by Francesco Scavulo, hair is by Carrie Warren, makeup by Joey Mills, and she's wearing fashion by Ralph Lauren. And what she's wearing is... Looks like a turtleneck. Looks like a turtleneck with perhaps some outerwear, fuchsia pink in color. Now, I noticed that the uh, Harper's Bazaar title, Bazaar, matches the the sweater she's wearing. And I'm sure that that's done intentionally. Probably. Looks fantastic. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Her makeup is done, again, as I said, by Joey Mills. Perfect makeup. She has her natural brows, which she's well known for. Now, Brooke, I'm sure you're all familiar with her. Her first job was for Ivory Soap. Did you know that? I did, actually. Yes. Also photographed by Scavulo. She was the Ivory Soap baby, and I remember her very well. I remember her to be a a little blonde baby. Mm -hmm. In this photo, she's 16 years old, and this is just one of the over 30 that she appeared on in 1981. Can you imagine? Wow. 30 covers in 1981. Um, Her mother, Terry Shields would never let the makeup artist pluck her brows. Mm -hmm. And she became known for these full brows, which is still very much in style. Thank goodness. Joey Mills, iconic, iconic makeup artist. He had done the makeup on Brooke the year before for those scandalous Calvin Klein ads, if Mm -hmm. you remember them. I do. What what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Yeah. So he characterized his signature look, Joey Mills, as natural glamour in his book. He wrote a book called New Classic Beauty. It was published in 1987. And this is a book that I would love to get a copy of personally, just to see. That's great. If any of you out there have read it, let us know and let us know what you think of it. Please do. I think I'm sure that I could buy it secondhand, but that's sure to be an interesting read. So Joey Mills has done makeup for over 1,600 magazine covers and probably well over that. He's fantastic. He's also worked on Broadway TV, and some of the most iconic ad campaigns that you can remember. That's amazing. And of course, Scavulo's done this cover. He's an amazing, amazing celebrity portrait photographer. I do have a book of his work. I thought I I saw it. I actually have an autographed book of his work. Oh, wow. Yes. 
And he'd also done Cosmopolitan covers for over 30 years. And didn't he also work a lot with Gia? He did. Yeah. He did several of her covers as well. Yes, he did. So. Excellent. So this is the November issue. Fabulous, fabulous issue. You're starting to see holiday gifts because this is November. So you're going to see a lot of ads for watches, for jewelry, furs and fragrances are very prominent in right. this issue. So that's the November issue of Harper's Bazaar and let's get uncovered. So I want to uh, talk about an ad. And this one is for Sophia Perfume by Coty. And it features the magnificent Sophia Loren. And Stephanie, maybe you can tell us uh, what the actual ad says in the middle. Yes. So I'm just going to read you the caption in the middle of the ad. So what you're looking at, you're looking at four photos of Sophia Loren. And in the middle, a picture of the bottle of Sophia by Cody. And what it says is, like the woman who inspired it, always magnificent, never the same. Right. So what's interesting about this ad, it's a really great layout. So you have the bottle of perfume and you have that little uh, blurb right in the middle of these four pictures. And the purpose of the four pictures, I guess, is to show her in different scenarios. So the first one is in a horse stable, because, of course, everyone who reads the magazine uh, has their own horse. Of course. Absolutely. Uh, For sure. Another one, she just looks uh, pretty in casual pink. Sort of pensive. Yes, been pensive. Thought, I would the, say. The next one, uh, she looks like she's wearing a mink stole uh, with the old finger in the light socket look. She has quite the tight perm on that one. Now, this is a different look for Sophia, for sure. It's definitely a different look. Yeah. And the last one, it looks like she's in a, a, a florist shop. So they have these different looks for her. So I guess they're trying to say that you can wear the uh, perfume with your, your, your uh, horse stable or in a florist shop or evening wear or just about town. It's very interesting. Uh, Sophia Loren, of course, is one of the most famous movie stars of all time. She was born in 1934. Uh, she won an Oscar. She's been in countless movies. Uh, she's probably known as much for her charity work uh, as she is for her movies. So really quite the icon. And that really caught my attention. She's stunning. She is magnificent. And I think that this is a very effective ad, don't you? Absolutely. Yes. So now we're coming to page 190. It's a layout entitled Rich and Racy, The Gold Rushes On. The models are Bitten Nutson, Lisa Rial, and Carrie Nigren, and also several male models. But let's face it, who's looking at the male models when Not you've got me. these gorgeous ladies here? Absolutely. The photography is by Jacques Malignon, hair by Didier Melige, and makeup by Sophie Levy. So what you have here, it's an eight-page layout of gold evening wear in various fabrics, silk, lame, and even leather. Beautiful. Look, Yes. They all look very gorgeous. The location's not provided, but it's an outdoor shooting. All the models are blonde. And their photographs sort of frolicking and having a good time with the male models. But you notice the male models, though, are all brunettes. Uh, this is true. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it, the models just they I guess wanted they to didn't... focus on the blonde. So she really stands out a lot more. So that's pretty she clever. She does, yeah, yes. Very clever. So they chose to use mainly, it looks like, Scandinavian models. Mm -hmm. Bitten was Dutch and Carrie is Swedish. Mm-hmm. I don't have too much background on Lisa Rial. I understand that she did become an actress. Okay. I'd love to know what she went on to do. So if anyone knows, please feel free to contact us. Our email is uncovered. Vintage at, at yahoo.com. Yahoo okay. Carrie Nigren is, I'm just going to turn the page here to describe what she's wearing. They're all wearing variations of gold and black. Carrie Nigren is wearing this gown that's really gorgeous. It's all beaded and it's, it's sort of floor length. Head to toe beating. She's got a black mink cape draped over her arm and looking very gorgeous. Of and course. It seems, sorry, Steph, it seems like mink is really, I guess, in fashion at that time. We've seen a lot of magazines and we've gone through a lot of magazines where, whether it's black mink or white mink or whatever, fur in particular really seems to be That's popular. That's true. It was really around this time, it was really prevalent, but I don't think you had the anti fur movement that you do these days. Not then. That's Not for sure. Not then. And this in particular. It's November. Yes. So women are wearing furs and also it's the holiday issue and a lot of the companies are pushing their furs. Good point. Even more than other times of the year. So right. another thing I notice, if you look at all these gowns that the models are wearing, they're all very high necklines. Yes, they are. You know, and that's the one consistency in this layout. I can see very long gowns, long sleeves. Like they're not risque at all. No, not at all. Very conservative by most standards, but they all look gorgeous it's all like formal fashion wear so the men are dressed in tuxes the women like you said are dressed in lame there's a lot of beading involved as well yeah so some evening formal wear is what they're focusing on in this issue yeah 
and gold in this particular layout yeah. is the theme. And so that's it for this layout. All right. Thanks, Steph. The next ad I want to focus on is for a company called Black Glamour. And the caption is, what becomes a legend most? And underneath is a picture of Natalie Wood. Now, what's really interesting, too, is that the photography is, is unique in the sense that the uh, lighting, it portrays her uh, in a very sort of a bright light. So it looks like there's a very strong bright light on her. Uh, it's a black and white ad. Again, she's wearing looks like a mink or probably not mink, but a fur coat with, with a bit of shoulder showing. It's really kind of a tragic ad. Because, again, this issue came out November of 1981, which happens to be the same month that Natalie Wood tragically drowned. Yes, very, very sad. But I believe Bill King did take these photos. And the caption, as you said, is what becomes a legend most. And he did use a lot of the Hollywood legends in these ads. I can remember Elizabeth Taylor. I can remember Sophia Loren yeah, being used for these one. ads. Yeah, Sophia Loren. And Bill King always did make women look their most beautiful. And you can see the hair and makeup. She is a Hollywood icon. Absolutely. She looks like a star. And just the way it's shot, uh, the makeup is flawless. I mean, everything about it is perfect. It's just, it's so tragic. So I just want to mention this ad in particular, uh, just because of the, really the, the sadness, the tragedy involved. And if, if you were around, if you remember 1981, unfortunately, it was in all the news, and it wasn't just in the news in 1981, mm, yes. but went on for years. And, and even now, there's a Netflix special about it, so it was very, very sad. So on page 206, we come to a layout. It's entitled The Gold Standard, YSL, and Deneuve. And it's a very short layout. It's Catherine Deneuve by Jacques Malignon, hair by Edina, and makeup by Thibault. And it's just actually, it's a very short layout. It's one photo spanning two pages. It's Catherine Deneuve looking her beautiful self reclining. Now, as most of you probably know, Catherine Deneuve is a French actress and model. Very, very prolific. She's wearing Yves Saint Laurent. What this short article is about is her views on clothing and her relationship with Yves Saint Laurent. She's wearing a black silk blouse with black and gold striped evening trousers and gold gloves. And as is the theme throughout this magazine, there's a lot of black and gold, which is clearly in style for this holiday issue. It's just continuing the theme from earlier on in the magazine. And sorry to interrupt, and her earrings as well. Her earrings are also gold. Looks like a gold pyramid shape. Yeah, Very they are. Pretty. They are. And they're, it's costume jewelry. And actually, I want to point out that in this article, she actually says that she's more passionate about shoes than about clothing. Mm -hmm. And that she likes her faux jewelry to look really fake. And I think that she has accomplished that here. You mean those are not real pyramids that she has on her ears? <laughs> The sort of large uh, chandelier type gold yeah. earrings. Very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Now, Catherine was considered a muse for Yves Saint Laurent. And he dressed her for several of her movies. Wow. And so this is just a collaboration between Catherine Deneuve and Yves Saint Laurent in this very beautiful photo. Turning the page on page 209, we have another layout entitled The Royal Beauty Looks. And what it is, is it's eight titled ladies wearing the new clear bright makeup looks. So when you say eight titled ladies, what do you mean exactly? They have some sort of pedigree. I don't know some all royal the, pedigree you mean. Some royal, some some aristocratic right. different type of pedigree. I'm just going to talk about a couple of them. Okay. Because there are eight. Right. And this is a half hour show. Right. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is Countess Agneta von Furstenberg. Okay. Now, she's got the name von Furstenberg. Obviously, she's somehow related to Diane by marriage. I don't know exactly how. I don't think she married Diane, did she? <laughs> but she was, well, her husband was Count Egon von Furstenberg. Ah, okay, Egon. Okay. So I know that name from Ghostbusters. Egon. I think it's a different Egon. Okay, just, just saying. I'm okay. Just, just Who a are you going to call? Okay. No, okay. So she went on to become a model, apparently. Mm -hmm. But here she's wearing a pink and orange taffeta silk outfit by oscar de la renta and she's wearing makeup also in shades of pink her blonde hairs were worn loosely and in curls right she looks very beautiful but what i love about these colors is the bright vibrant pink and sort of a tangerine orange now you know from holiday parties that we go to it's almost a sea of black right absolutely because black is easy 
Right. And here we're looking at a, a November issue. This is holiday wear, and she's wearing bright. And it's nice to see these bright, vibrant colors. Right. But there's a couple of things I notice about this. Number one, the shoulder pads or the puffy shoulders. Huge, yes. I mean, she could play linebacker for any team in the NFL. I mean, those are monster size uh, shoulder pads. They're very, very extreme. Also, again, no cleavage at all. I mean, I show more cleavage in my daily wear than she does right now. Like, this is almost right up to the top of her neck. No, it's so true. And it seems to be a theme in this magazine. It seems that low-cut gowns were not really the style. And another thing that I'm seeing, not in this particular photo, but we'll be talking about it later on in the magazine, is I'm seeing a lot of one shoulder. Oh, here we go. Actually, turning the page, the next aristocrat slash princess that I wanted to talk about is Princess Yasmin Aga Khan. And she's shown here in a black and white photo. It's uncredited. I'm not sure who took this photo, but the hair and makeup is by Rick Gillette. And I know that Rick also liked to photograph. He's a very acclaimed photographer as well. So it's possible that he took this photo. I'd be interested to hear from you, Rick, if you're listening. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Princess Aga Khan, maybe you can tell our listeners who her famous mother is. Yes. So she's the daughter of Rita Hayworth. And Prince Ali Khan. So Rita Hayworth, again, she was a bombshell from the 30s and 40s. Uh, well, well documented career in Hollywood. And she ended up marrying the very famous uh, Aga Khan. And she looks a lot like her mother she here. She really does. She does. And she's about 40 years old, just to give you an idea. If you were to do uh, surveys or look at surveys of Hollywood beauties, Rita Hayworth always comes within, let's say, the top 10 or top 5 of all-time Hollywood beauties. There's Hedy Lamarr and and so on. But uh, she definitely has a natural beauty, uh, as does her daughter. Yes. And she's and photographed beautifully here. Rick Gillette, you've done an amazing job with the hair and makeup. She looks very, very glamorous. But very natural, too. She does. She's wearing an off-the-shoulder sequin top with a black skirt. The designer is Casper for Joan Leslie, and she's wearing jewelry by Harry Winston. Mm, Harry Winston. Yes. Very famous. Yeah. But what a great layout that is. It is. And I love the fact they are taking these aristocratic women, uh, princesses, and so on, and they make them look like models. I mean, in some cases, you could not tell they were not professional models. And Absolutely. I'm sure that's exactly what they were going for. And also, just looking at the age of, like, these are not young ladies. These are, you know, f ladies, some of them Middle -aged. in their 40s. Like, and who is reading this magazine? This is Harper's Bazaar. Right. You know? So uh, really 30s, probably 40s, maybe 50-year-old women. So, And they're showing that glamour is glamour. It doesn't matter what age you are. And this is fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can have style at any age. Absolutely. And they really show it. So it's great. Yes. Great job. I thought so too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is a layout or really uh, an article about Tennessee Williams. For those of you who aren't familiar with Tennessee Williams, but perhaps know the name, he is considered or he was considered at the time to be America's greatest living writer. Now, tragically, he passed away in February, I believe, of 1983. He actually choked to death. But some of the works he was really known for include uh, The Glass Menagerie, A Streetcar Named Desire, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. I mean, he was absolutely Amazing. iconic. I think he was about 71 or so when he passed away. But there's an article here... And the article talks about what does a double Pulitzer Prize winner, a four-time New York Drama Critics Circle awardee, also a Tony Award winning recipient of the nation's Medal of Freedom, have to say about yet another tribute. So they're talking a little about him, very casual, uh, a great article. But one of the reasons why I want to bring your attention to this is because the magazines are not just about the models. They're not just about advertising clothes and jewelry, but sometimes they really have fascinating articles about very famous people. And in this case, there's a great article about, again, perhaps one of the most famous playwrights of all time. When you talk about playwrights, some of the top ones at the list, you have Tennessee Williams. You might have, for example, Neil Simon, uh, Eugene O'Neill, Harold Pinter, um, Samuel Beckett. Those are some of the greatest playwrights of the 20th century, and uh, I think it's fascinating that they would focus on him. So when you look at magazines, don't just look for the obvious. Sometimes you have these little hidden gems that you can find, and that's one of the many things that I love about these little pieces of nostalgia. For sure. And if I could just cut in, this is a very beautiful photo by Francesco Scavulo here. It's black and white, and as you know, Scavulo, again, a very prolific portrait, celebrity portrait photographer. 
So it really, he really had a way of showing personality. Yeah. So, you know, he really had a way of getting the subject's personality and showing it to the world. And he's done so here. Very beautiful. And what's really nice is that I wouldn't say Tennessee Williams was reclusive, but again, he's not in front of the camera. He's not on the stage. He's on the the, scenes. Exactly. Yes. So the fact that they're actually giving a voice to someone who normally doesn't have one, unless they're actually writing, is really nice. So I really like that. Very, nice. So here we are, page 222. It's a layout entitled, For Unbeatable Glamour Adolfo, The Man Behind Your Most Perfect Nights. There are four star models, Iman, Lisa Taylor, Shelley Smith, and Dale Haddon. Photography by James Moore, hair by Bob Fink, and makeup by Paul Goebel. So these four iconic models, so amazing, but I have a special place in my heart for, for Dale Haddon. And why is that? Love you, Dale Haddon. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because she's Canadian. Okay. And because she's from Montreal originally, like I am. Oh. And because she's gorgeous. Like Natural you. beauty. So That's nice. So let's continue on. So moving right along. This is an article and layout on designer Adolfo. So Adolfo was America's current status designer. Okay. He was an award-winning Cuban-born American fashion designer, and he started as a milliner. Oh, wow. It seems like a lot of the designers do start as milliners. Like Halston, right? Yes. That's That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So he opened his own hat boutique in 1962. He had financial help from Bill Blass. But he began to focus on clothing design instead. So that's interesting. So here's a clothing designer, Bill Blass, who's funding a milliner, hmm. Adolfo. And then Adolfo becomes his, his in a sense, his, comp- his competition. So, wow. Yeah. So he's designed clothing for Wallace Simpson, Nancy Reagan, wow. some of his clients, Gloria Vanderbilt, among many others. Impressive. The Adolfo brand is actually still around. Really? Yes. Hmm. So the, the models in this layout are all mentioned by name. They're all big stars. Again, it's evening wear showing lots of gold, a continuation of, again, this issue's holiday theme. But what I notice about it, first of all, is the natural hair on Iman and on Dale Haddon. They haven't made any effort to tame their curly hair. They look gorgeous. And also, I notice how mature these fashions look. Like, these young ladies are probably in their 20s, and they're dressed like they're in their 40s. And I guess, again, this is speaking probably to the audience of this magazine. They're older and more sophisticated tastes. You don't see anything low cut. You don't see any mini skirts, nothing like that. So Adolfo's signature was were bows at the time, um, bows on clothing. Okay. So you see that reflected a lot in this layout. His signature bows, beading, ruffles, lace and rich colors very sort of holiday themed colors you have the golds and you have here like a dark dark red looks like velvet almost it's almost like a velvet curtain you know what i think i think it's silk lots of beading yes okay the hair worn loose curly natural curls left natural looking now this is the first layout that we've seen where the models are wearing uh dresses that doesn't go all the way up to the top of their necks well some of them do I see some of them are up to their neck, and some of them are one-shouldered, which is also seems to be the style. Right. But the article I actually went through and read it, and it claims that Adolfo's clothes never become outdated. And what do you think of that, looking at this? I think he's probably right. I don't know about the bows. I mean... That's what I was thinking, too, I have to say. It's, to me, now we're in the year 2020, and to me, it actually does look outdated, which would be expected. Right. I mean, it's been almost 40 years, but these huge bows... Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly different. It's definitely eye-catching, you know, but I'm not the one wearing it. Would you wear something like that? I would wear something like that minus the bow on the shoulder. That's what I'm talking about, the yeah. bows, though. It's just... Yeah, but otherwise, it's a pretty classic holiday look. Nothing... It's really a nice dress, and certainly it's a nice layout. Uh, but again, listen, if you have your opinions on bows, if you're wearing bows, let us know. The hair and makeup is beautiful. You can also reach us, by the way, on Twitter at Uncovered... VFMR and also on Instagram at uncovered underscore VFMR. Right. Thanks, Steph. So, what I want to focus on last is an ad. It's an ad for the Hearst Corporation. But what really caught my eye about this is that it features the immortal, the amazing Sid Caesar. Amazing. Now, for those of you who maybe again know the name but aren't really that familiar with him, uh, Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca hosted your show of shows, which was really the very first 
great sketch comedy show. And what was great about this show, too, it introduced a lot of amazing talent. Uh, Tom Poston, you may recall, uh, as well, it, it introduced us to the man who played Barney Fife, uh, Don Knotts. Uh, Neil Simon got his work uh, writing for your show shows. Woody Allen got his start writing for your show shows in the final season. So it really was great. Now, I didn't know much about the Hearst Corporation, just beyond newspapers. But they talked about how they publish books newspapers, magazines. They also have TV stations, forest products. Uh, they're involved in ranching and real estate. And this is a great example where they're not trying to sell anything. Well, you know, the ad actually says we publish 20 magazines like Cosmopolitan and Good Housekeeping, but I think now that's way more. Probably. Way more than 20. But again, what's interesting about this, this is a perfect example of share of mind advertising as opposed to share of market. Share of market is when they're trying to sell something. Here, they're not trying to sell anything. They're not telling you about their famous collection that they, you should buy and nothing. It's about trying to keep their name in in the top of your minds. Yes, their brand. It's exactly. It's a form of branding. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But again, a uh, huge, huge shout out to the late Sid Caesar who is really one of the greatest, uh, I wouldn't call him a comedian, but one of the greatest comic entertainers of, I wouldn't say our generation, but of all time, certainly of the 20th century. So a big shout out to him. Excellent choice in this ad. Thanks. So here we are at page 226, and it's a layout entitled Things Bright and Wonderful. And this is one of my personal favorite of the layouts in this magazine, and it's an absolute must-see. And for that reason, I will be posting photos on my Instagram page, Great Mags. And by the way, this magazine as well as many others, are available in my eBay and Etsy stores, also called Great Mags. G-R number 8 M-A-G-Z. Or so, Z if you're in the U.S. Or Z. <laughs> so the models are Carol Alt, Rosemary McGrotha, Janice Dickinson, Renee Russo, and some others. The photography is Francesco Scavulo, hair by Michael Anthony, Bob Fink, and Harry King, all masters of hair from this time period. And the makeup by Joey Mills, who also did the cover, and Way Bandy. So what I love about this layout is, first off, it's all the top models of the time. The top, top models. The names that we all know and love. And the fashion is different. And the reason it stands out from the rest of the magazine is the models are wearing colors. And it's been a recurring theme in this particular magazine that the models are wearing black, black and gold, gold, gold and black. Almost and this is, muted colors. Yeah. And... These models are wearing, here's a, a light blue, a fuchsia pink dress with a huge ruff, ruffle here on Rosemary McGrotha looking gorgeous. Next page, Rosemary's wearing a handful of rings. And some, just to give you an idea, some of the fashion shown on in this article, they're extravagant jewels, furs, and nighttime gorgeous. clothes in bright colors, ruffles, beading. Here is Janice Dickinson wearing this gorgeous beaded jacket off the shoulder, wow. looking over her shoulder. She looks stunning. The models are made up to perfection. So kudos to Joey Mills and, of course, Way Bandy, a master of makeup as well. Yes. And I noticed that the models are wearing very neutral colors, sort of taupe eyes, nothing very bright on their faces, hair mostly worn curly or wavy. And you've got a mixed bag of, of you've got three different hairstylists working in this layout. Oh, wow. Yes. That's unusual, isn't it? It is unusual. Designers include Halston, Oscar de la Renta, Donna Karen and Louis Del Olio. Wow. Fernando Sanchez, Emmanuel Longaro. So again, a mixed bag of American and that's European an incredible designers. Amount, that's an incredible amount of talent for one layout. It is. I love this layout so wow. much. Jewelry by Paloma Picasso and Alza Peretti for Tiffany. Cartier, Van Cleef and Arpels. Just beautiful. The models yeah. look stunning. Some close-up shots and some further away. Again, nothing too showy, no cleavage. You've got Renee Russo here, of course, big, big model turned actress. Everyone looks gorgeous. It's just a real mixed bag. And here's a close-up again, a close-up of Carol Alt wearing diamond jewelry. Now, I do have to say, again, the fashions do look a little... Dated or muted? Not so much. This is actually, I have to say, this is they look a little bit more age-appropriate. In right. this particular layout right. than and what it, we've seen previously in the magazine. Right. I don't think you'd see like a 20-something wear that type of, those types of dresses. No, I think you would see a 20-something wearing these types of off-the-shoulder, sort of a little sexier. No, off-the-shoulder, but the one Janice Dickinson is wearing, for example, is a little more conservative, I would think. 
It is a little more conservative, but it is off the shoulders. She looks stunning. She does. But I found in the rest of the magazine, the models were dressed sort of older, more conservatively. And this is, to me, a more age-appropriate layout. And I think that's what I love about it. That's true. Yeah. The models look very comfortable. I think you raise a good point because I, I, I feel, certainly back then in the early 80s, that when you think about women who are wearing the golds and the silvers, maybe older women, not old women, but certainly yes. like middle-aged women uh, and beyond who are very conservative. And this, you are right. I didn't see that Janice Dickinson is wearing like off the shoulder. It's really very pretty as well. And even though this is a holiday issue, you're seeing brighter colors. Even though this is a winter, you're in the dead of the winter here in November. But you're seeing lighter, brighter colors. The girls look lovely. And, yeah. I, and I really, really love this particular layout. It's a must, must see. Yeah, it's a gorgeous layout. Well, thanks for sharing that, Steph. My pleasure. So thanks again for listening to this great episode, I hope, of, <laughs> of uh, Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review Podcast. Thank you, guys. Again, we look forward to uh, speaking with you next time, where we have another exciting piece of pop culture history and nostalgia. And we can't wait. Absolutely. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening to Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review Podcast. Uncovered was produced by Morley Shulman, with music by David Renda, and logo design by Alan Lipman. So remember, if you liked Uncovered, be sure to tell two friends about it. And I'll tell two friends. And, and so, so on, on, and so on, and so on. And so on.